If you're an animation fan, you're probably familiar with the films created by Disney and Pixar. But some of your favorite flicks might look completely different depending on where in the world you're watching them. We'll talk about why Riley refusing broccoli baffled Japanese test audiences, and which audience title got translated into, it doesn't fit inside the head. Yeah, that one loses a bit of magic when it's in English, doesn't it? Dory might be a little bit confused, but she's not the only one hearing voices in the Marine Life Institute. Only you might be hearing a different voice depending on where in the world you watch the movie. Without further ado, let's look at some Disney and Pixar movies that were changed in other countries. In the United States and many other places in the world, broccoli is pretty much the standard for healthy foods little kids don't like. Sure, there are exceptions, but for the most part, kids and some adults would rather munch on dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets than deal with gross green broccoli. So it's no wonder that when Pixar needed a food for little Riley to reject an inside out, they went for the old standby. But they were surprised when the scene fell flat with test audiences in Japan. It turns out that in Japan, most people like broccoli, even little kids. Riley turning her nose up to broccoli didn't make sense because it was the equivalent of a kid rejecting the aforementioned dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets. So Pixar changed the scene to show Riley rejecting green peppers for the version of Inside Out to be shown in Japan, since that's more of a controversial food there. In the movie Cars, you might have heard a familiar voice, but it's a different one depending on which version of the movie you're watching. Harv is the agent of Lightning McQueen, who we never actually got to see. Instead, we hear the voice over the telephone, and in the United States, that voice belongs to Jeremy Piven, who's been in movies like Black Hawk Down, The Kingdom, and Serendipity. But in the UK, he's voiced by British TV personality Jeremy Clarkson, who hosts the show Top Gear. There are also a few dialogue differences between Piven and Clarkson. Instead of saying, kid, I'm over here, like in the US version, Clarkson exclaims, oi, I'm over here. In the US version, Harv says, come on, kid, get in the trailer. And in the UK version, he says, come on, mate, get in the trailer. We know it's hard to watch the movie up through a thick layer of your own tears, so you might not have noticed this minor detail that ended up getting changed in the international version of the film. Back when they were kids and before their lives became unbearably tragic, Carl and Ellie bonded over the passion for adventure and started a change jar to fund their dream trip to Paradise Falls. Ellie helpfully labels the jar Paradise Falls, and the two start adding their spare change as life continually depletes what little money they're able to put together. No, we're not starting to cry again, it's allergies. But in other countries, the jar isn't labeled as Paradise Falls, but instead has a picture of the falls. It means the same thing, but it's easier for non-English speakers to understand without needing a subtitle. It's no less depressing, but it's a nice way to make a scene appear more seamless for other audiences. When we finished watching Monsters, Inc., we were eager to know what happened to Boo after she wound up back in her own room. Like, did she grow up to be the little girl at Sunnyside in Toy Story 3? Or could she have been the witch from Brave? Or both, depending on how crazy you like your fan theories. Instead, we got Monsters University, a movie we didn't know we needed about Mike and Sully's time at, well, Monsters University. In one scene, the nefarious Randall offers up a tray of cupcakes reading, Be My Pal, in the icing. Aww, isn't that nice? We're sure he wasn't up to anything terrible, but Be My Pal doesn't translate everywhere, so other versions of the movie feature smiley faces instead of letters. Regardless over whether they have letters or smiley faces on them, we can all agree that it's always best to say it with cupcakes. The movie Wreck-It Ralph introduced us to many players in the Sugar Rush game, including a green-haired gal named Minty Zaki, whose theme is mint and candied apples. Kind of opposing flavors, but we're not here to talk about that. Her name is a tribute to famous Japanese animator Hayao Miyazaki, who's responsible for classics like Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, and My Neighbor Totoro. She's not a particularly controversial character, but for some reason, she got the boot when it came to the Japanese version of the film. This version of Wreck-It Ralph replaces Minty Zaki with a character named Minty Sakura, who looks completely different. If anything, you'd think Japan would appreciate a good Hayao Miyazaki reference, but it is what it is. Minty Sakura looks an awful lot like Candlehead, and she's a playable character in the game Disney Crossroad, while Minty Zaki is not. Everyone loves a good inspiring speech, especially when it's delivered by one of our favorite walking talking toys. In the movie Toy Story 2, Woody goes missing, and it's up to his pals to find him and bring him home. Buzz Lightyear boosts the group's morale with an inspirational talk delivered in front of an American flag, with the Star Spangled Banner playing in the background. But naturally, this scene wouldn't have the same impact in countries outside the United States, so in the international version, Buzz stands in front of a globe instead of an American flag. The American National Anthem is replaced with a song called One World Anthem, which definitely fits in better with the globe, 
It also gave us a lot of food for thought regarding the potential patriotism of sentient toys in the Toy Story franchise. As we're sure you know, the animated movie Ratatouille takes place in Paris, France, and the culture is an important part of the film. Of course, the film is available in different languages, but there's one version that got an extra bit of translation. There's a scene in the movie when Remy the Talented Rat reads a letter, which American audiences saw written in English. However, in the French version of the movie, the letter appears to be written in French instead of there just being French subtitles. This may seem like a small detail, but it really does help to make a more immersive movie for a non-English speaking audiences. And since the movie does take place in Paris, it makes sense that this edit was made. Zootopia is a great movie that takes place in a world where carnivores, herbivores, and omnivores all manage to coexist peacefully with one another. Well, for the most part. If you saw the movie in the United States, Canada, or France, then you'd probably think the news anchors featured in the movie are a snow leopard and a moose who drinks out of a cup with a red maple leaf on it. But Peter Moosebridge is swapped out for other animals in other versions of the movie. In the UK version, he's still a moose, but he's called Moosos Alexander and is voiced by British newscaster Vasos Alexander. In the New Zealand and Australian version, he's a koala bear named David Koala Bell, voiced by comedian David Gamble. In Brazil, he's a jaguar named Boy Cha, voiced by news anchor Ricardo Boidechand. And in Japan, He's a Japanese raccoon dog, also known as a tanuki, named Michael Tanuyama, voiced by comedian Imorezaka Kakaricho. In China, the reporter is a nameless panda, voiced by reporter Peter Mansbridge, who also voices Peter Moosebridge. Regardless of which version of the movie this is, one of the ZNN anchors is always Fabian Growley, the snow leopard. There are many movies that have been tweaked to make more sense in different countries, and Inside Out has a surprising number of alterations. There's one scene where we see Riley's dad daydreaming about sports, which should be pretty international, but depending on which version you're watching, Riley's dad could be watching an entirely different sport. In one version of the movie, he's watching a hockey game. According to Inside Out director Pete Docter, the characters in the movie are from Minnesota, so it's safe to assume they're hockey fans, or at least that dad is. But elsewhere in the world, it's all about soccer or football. So they added an additional version where Riley's dad has soccer on his mind instead of hockey. Earlier, we talked about how Ellie and Carl's change jar from Up shows either the words Paradise Falls or a hand-drawn picture of the falls, depending on which version of the movie you're watching. But there's another translation difference, and this time, it's more than simply words or a picture. In addition to collecting her spare change, Ellie also puts together an album labeled as My Adventure Book. But there are different versions of this book cover in various languages, including French, Polish, and Russian. So if you see a version of the adventure book reading Mon Livre de Venture, then you're probably watching the movie in French, which hopefully you noticed already. Up is one of those movies that we love, even though it had a sobbing hysterically mere moments into the film. Not that we'd ever admit that outside of this video. Don't tell anybody. Toy Story 3 has no slouch in the tear-making department either, but we're not going to talk about that tragic scene where the toys were seen slipping into the incinerator. Well, not yet anyway. At the very beginning of the movie, you see the words Toy Story, and the brand comes out and smears the number 3 underneath it. This logo was translated for other countries, but the Russian version ended up being a bit long. In order to make the whole logo look more cohesive, the size of the brand itself had to be increased. Thankfully, this edit was pretty minor, unlike the fact that originally our beloved toys like Woody, Buzz Lightyear, and Jesse weren't going to be saved from the incinerator at the last possible moment. Now that would have made it sadder than up. Wow, we're just on a huge roll with movies that definitely didn't under any circumstances make us cry. Coco is a gorgeous movie with great characters and music, and the title Coco refers to Miguel's great-grandmother, Mama Coco. But it might surprise you to learn that the movie got an entirely different title when it was released in Brazil. Instead of going to the theater to see Coco, fans in Brazil went to see the movie called Viva! A Viva é uma Festa! But in case you're not caught up on your Brazilian, we'll translate. Cheers! Life is a party! Well, that's a misleadingly cheerful title. But what's with the change? It turns out that in Portuguese, the word coco has a very different meaning and it's not very endearing. This means they ought to change the name of the character, changing Mama Coco to Lapita. Shakespeare may have asked what's in a name, but in this case, uh, it's kind of a lot. Not every studio has the resources of massive movie makers like Disney and Pixar, and that's understandable. But it doesn't mean they should go ahead and try and rip off content from more successful studios. You might be surprised to know how many of your favorite animated movies have unlicensed knockoff versions in other countries. If you liked Ratatouille, well, we recommend skipping its Brazilian counterpart, Ratatouille. The animation is terrible, the story is terrible, and the dialogue is simply unforgivingly bad. 
The classic Disney movie, The Jungle Book, is the retelling of the works of Rudyard Kipling, about a boy raised by wolves, but the same year The Jungle Book was released, so was a Russian version, called The Adventures of Mowgli. Honestly, it's not a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination, and it's actually far more faithful to Kipling's original works, but that also means it's much darker and savage, and it had to be heavily edited when it was eventually dubbed and remastered for American audiences. In the movie Cars 2, we were introduced to one of the greatest race cars to ever exist, Jeff Corvette. Fans first caught a glimpse of him at the Tokyo Welcome Party, and in the American version, he appears as a primarily yellow race car, adorned with stars and stripes and voiced by professional race car driver Jeff Gordon. However, there aren't just other versions of Jeff Corvette. There are totally different cars with different voice actors in different versions of the film. For instance, the Spanish film has a blue car with red and yellow stripes called Fernando Alonso, named after the two-time Formula One champion and the Chinese release features a red car with a yellow star named Long G. There are lots of different versions, but interestingly enough, the replacements are only found in the scene featuring the Tokyo Party, and when the scene appears in Mater's Nightmares, the alternate versions aren't included in the racing scenes for whatever reason. In the movie Monsters University, we learn the titular school hosts an event known as the Scare Games, and frankly, it's way better than any college sport we have in the real world. Monsters show off their spooky skills in a variety of events designed to judge just how scary they really are. These include games like Toxicity Challenge, Avoid the Parent, and Don't Scare the Teen. The English version of the movie we saw a banner hanging up which reads Scare Games, but international audiences saw a similar banner with Greek letters instead of English words. Apparently, the creepy font and tons of monsters milling around got the point across just fine without it needing to be literally spelled out. The Incredibles is a great movie, and who could forget the villain Rollamore? What? You don't know who that is? And you call yourself a fan? In the version of the movie you're most likely familiar with, there's a character known as Bon Voyage, who's an enemy of Mr. Incredible. His pun is a name on the French phrase Bon Voyage, which basically means have a nice trip. So pleasant. But interestingly enough, he was renamed in the French version to Follamore, which means strange love. Why the change? Especially considering that the joke works in French as well as English? Well, in French, the second B isn't silent, making Bon Voyage sound kind of awkward. In the English version, the character calls Mr. Incredible Monsieur Incredible, but in the French version of the film, he calls him Monsieur Indestructible. You might have also got a glimpse of this character when he made a cameo in Ratatouille. In the movie Inside Out, a young Riley comes up with an imaginary friend called Bing Bong, who kind of looks like a cotton candy elephant with a raccoon tail. What can we say? The kid's creative. Before Bing Bong broke all of our hearts by falling into the memory dump, there's a scene where he's reading a sign aloud to joy and sadness. He points to the letters spelling out danger and says it's a shortcut. Hey, he only has the reading skills of a three-year-old, give him a break. But in other versions of the film, the sign is translated into other languages, and Pixar even went the extra mile and reanimated Bing Bong's hand so he points to each letter from right to left instead of left to right in order to accommodate the language differences. All in the details, folks. Finding Nemo and its sequel Finding Dory involve many undersea scenes where cultural differences aren't so noticeable. But in Finding Dory, there's a big switch that occurs when Dory winds up at the Marine Life Institute. There, many audiences heard the familiar voice of actress Sigourney Weaver, but that's only in English-speaking countries. Different voice actors were hired for the role depending where the version was being released. In France, the part went to news anchor Claire Chazal, and in Mexico, astronaut Rodolfo Neri Vela did the honors. Since we never got to see a face to match the voice booming over the PA system, this was an easy way to make the character recognizable to the audience. As if Dory wasn't easily confused enough, she also had to deal with hearing voices, which were sure didn't help. Earlier we mentioned that Coco was renamed when it was released in Brazil, and it's not the only movie to have gotten that treatment. Moana is an excellent movie about the seafaring eponymous character, but her name didn't quite work out in Italy. No, Moana doesn't mean anything obscene, but it is widely associated with a certain adult film star named Moana Pazzi. Apparently, Disney was worried this could give audiences the wrong idea about the main character, so they called the film Oceania instead. In other parts of Europe, the movie is called Viana, which translates to Water Cave, because Moana is already a registered brand. The movie Inside Out had so many variations on the title, it's kind of crazy. In Mexico, it's called Intensamente, or Intense Mind, while in France, the movie is called Vice Versa. 
folks in Germany know the movie as Everything is Upside Down, and in Saudi Arabia, it's Heart and Mind. One of our favorites has to be the Polish translation, which means it doesn't fit inside the head in English. And let's not forget about fantastical emotional turmoil in Thailand. Talk about setting a mood. In the movie Planes, we're introduced to a smart, tough racer plane named Raquel. In the American version of the movie, she's depicted as a pink, white, and red plane, but different versions got to be different versions of the same character. Interestingly enough, most of them are still named Raquel, but they're all covered in different colors. In the Australian and New Zealand versions, she's voiced by Australian actress Jessica Moray, and some lines regarding her nationality have been changed. In Brazil, she's Carolina, a white, blue, green, and yellow plane, while in Russia, she's the red, white, and blue Tanya. In Germany, she's a white, black, yellow, and red plane called Heidi, and in the Japanese version, she's a pink and white plane named Sakura. What do you think about these fixes? Are there any versions of these family-friendly films you'd wish you'd gotten to see instead? Let us know in the comments section and then click on the subscribe button for more videos from us here at CBR. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.